Let me go to Vaughn Hilliard and Vaughn lay out for us, if you will, their argument that this is a story that along the way has changed. <laughs> Right. This is the argument that Trump's attorneys say is part of their arguments that Stormy Daniels' testimony should have been limited in the first place here, because they're contending that the story that she would have told publicly in 2016 if her story did become public would vary from what she is currently telling here the jury today, making the case that, right, if we are expecting the prosecution in closing arguments to suggest that the reason why Stormy Daniels' story was so pertinent and why a $130,000 payoff took place to keep it from going public was because of how much of a bombshell the details of her story would be, because already it was out there in 2011 on a blog, the fact that she had had an encounter with, Storm, with, with Donald Trump. But this, what the prosecution is going to argue, is it was the details that were going to matter so much in why Donald Trump wanted to conceal the story and have these hush money payments concealed through calling these legal expenses here. And so what the argument is from Donald Trump's attorney is that this is the kind of attorney that makes it impossible to come back from, and that her story that she has now chronicled to the jury is not the same story that would have been public for the American public ahead of the 2016 election that the prosecution is prepared to say worked as essentially an in-kind contribution and one that would have potentially been more damaging to Donald Trump. The issue of why didn't you raise more objections during the prosecution if you were concerned about the line of testimony? The defense did raise some objections, right? Remind us what those were and how that all went down. Right. There were several times that Donald Trump's defense attorneys did raise objections, and Judge Marchand, in deciding that there is no mistrial at this point, said that he sustained most of those objections that were brought forward by Donald Trump's team, while adding on that he was surprised, frankly, that they didn't raise more objections. And one of the points of inquiry and arguments from Trump's team as to why there should be a mistrial is over that particular 2011 incident in, an, in a Las Vegas parking lot that stormed Daniels alleges to have taken place. She said that In Touch magazine had come to her about potentially publishing a story related to her encounter with Donald Trump. And ultimately, they didn't run with that story. But then she detailed in front of the jury that she was with her daughter going to a workout class in 2011 in this Las Vegas parking lot. And then a man who she was never able to identify threatened her to never share her story publicly and to stop talking about it, about her encounter, alleged encounter with Donald Trump. And over the course of her sharing the parking lot story, at no point did Donald Trump's attorneys directly raise an objection to that. Yet when they came back here from the lunch break, that was one specific example that they gave to the judge as to why this should be a mistrial, because they called it prejudicial and it cast Donald Trump in a negative light, implying that he was behind this supposed scare tactic to keep Stormy Daniels from sharing her story. Now, it's part of this back and forth here currently taking place. The prosecution has suggested to Judge Mershon and the defense that they would uh, put forward a draft limiting instruction regarding the uh, uh, parking lot incident. And the limiting instruction would allow the judge to then go back to the jury once they come in and revisit that particular incident. And the judge would order them to take into an account that incident for one reason, but not others. So uh, suggesting to them that they should not take a larger implication away from that as to ensure that this is a fair trial and not prejudicial to Donald Trump here. And so this is sort of in the weeds here, but an important element that the judge directly acknowledging he was surprised that Donald Trump's defense team didn't raise an objection over, for example, this very specific evidence that they now want him to determine this trial to be a mistrial on these very factors.